When I first got into RPGs, Dungeon Dragon is my staple for a long time. After a while, I wanted to get into an RPG that was flavored differently and themed to something other than maybe, you know, generic fantasy. The group turned to Call of Cthulhu, which had paper-thin characters you could make in a few minutes, and just like paper, on contact with water, they'd shrivel up and die. It's a horror RPG, and in most horrors, it usually follows characters who die one by one. Our first story took place in 1923, in Alaska. Our private investigator, Dick Tracy, and engineering student Walter were hired out by a family because their son, David, who was in university, had gone missing. David studied Native American history. In his research, he had found out that there were some strange rituals that ancient Native American tribes had performed at a mountain and traveled there to see if he could uncover any secrets, but he hadn't returned. The players tracked the missing person to Copperton, a town far away from any civilized cities. With no roads in the wilderness, they had to take dog sleds out to traverse the wilds. After two days of eventless travel across the featureless landscape, they arrive in the city of Copperton, a mining town. It's out in the boonies, locked on all sides by silent mountains. The town is very quiet, and the players see no one out on the streets. A thin veil of snow passes across the town like a soft paintbrush, dusting the roofs with white powder. They wander the abandoned streets, their footsteps echoing out with no response. They enter into the general store, calling out, Hello? Hello? Is anybody in here? The two break down the door and go into the back room. A wardrobe had been moved to block the doorway. The players get spooked when they notice a skeleton slumped on the floor. Well, I guess you could say someone had skeletons in their closet. Seriously, though, you think the owner killed someone and stuffed them into this closet? Searching the bunkhouses next, the players saw a similar sight. Several sets of bones on the floor. Hmm, seems like maybe someone's been killing people and hiding the bodies around town. After searching for hours, they notice a house that is boarded up with wood planks over the windows and doors. The boards appear to be nailed out from the inside. The players knew that they had to get to the bottom of this mystery and knocked aside the wood, breaking in. The house was pitch dark. They hear muttering coming from the back room and explore to find a man rocking back and forth, covered tightly in a blanket, looking up at the ceiling. He didn't acknowledge the group, just saying to himself, they come, they come at night, and they take, they take, and they take, uh, they take everything, uh, the noises that they make. And he continued to look up at the ceiling. <laughs> Every night, they come again. Come okay, again. sure. Uh, just, uh, you can hang out in here. We'll be here if you need us. A soft clap of thunder echoes across the sky. It seems like there might be a storm coming on the horizon. It's starting to get late so they decide to rest in the town for the night. Even though this guy is crazy, he seems to be the only one who's okay. Well, physically. So this house may be supposedly safer than anywhere else. They decide to stay the night with him. They take the dogs to the barn and close them in. The sun's head sinks below the horizon, and it turns from dusk to night. The players pull out their blankets, light a fire, and try to fall asleep. But it's tough with their psychotic friend who keeps muttering to himself, Rocking yes, back find and me, forth, and they'll find back us, and forth. And they'll find together. There's no hiding from them. There is no hiding from them. There's rattling as the wind is starting to pick up, trees pecking at the side of their home. Then a howl comes from outside, followed by barking and whimpering. It's the dogs. Something's happened to them. God damn it, Tracy says, pulling out his gun and flashlight. You stay here, I'm going out. There's a soft crunch crunch of the snow, the crackle of lightning, the howl of the wind, and the cry of the dogs. Tracy creeps his way over to the doors of the barn, which are rattling and shaking violently as there is something on the inside pounding on it. He cautiously lifts the latch, unlocking the door as several of the dogs bolt out of the barn, running towards the woods, and are gone. Inside is the high-pitched whistling noise that bugs make. He turns his flashlight inside to see one of the dog's bodies on the floor. Several insects were on it, eating the corpse. There was some bizarre type of bug that had a strange form, like fungus, with multiple sets of wings. It flew unlike any insect Tracy had ever seen before. The insects, if you could call them that, were taking bites out of the body of a dead dog, lapping up the blood, swarming upon it like locusts, and they were ripping the flesh right from the bone. And I describe how outside, as the storm approaches, it started to sound clearer and has a hum, almost like a swarm. 
We cut back over to the house, where Walter is standing in front, keeping a lookout. He sees Tracy running towards him, screaming at the top of his voice. Get back in the house! Get the frick back in the house! Don't be outside! As he's running in Walter's direction, a black cloud passes across the town, blocking the moon. Flesh-eating locusts are descending, landing on them, and taking bites out of their skin. The two rush into the house and slam the door shut, but the locusts start worming their way in through the cracks. Uh, they're back again. Oh, this time. Uh, this the crazy time, person don't said, me. wrapping don't the blankets around them, rocking back and forth even more violently this time. The two players ran through the house, sealing up the windows and doors with boards, but the bugs were working their way in through the slits in the wood. The house creaked as the insects scratched to the boards, pulling them off. Outside, the roar of the hive was deafening as it swirled around the house, desperately trying to find a way in. After hours and hours of fighting them, killing the ones that had gotten in and sealing up cracks, morning reluctantly arrived, and the bugs are chased off, traveling towards the mine. The players are both physically and mentally exhausted. We have to go. We gotta get into that mine. We gotta get to the bottom of this. Do we, though? After that incident, the players both had lost enough sanity to both develop a permanent character quirk. Ever since then, for the rest of their lives, Walter would sometimes slap his body as if there was a bug there, even though there was nothing, while Tracy would sometimes see black specks on the horizon and be afraid of storms. The two players suit up with their harnesses and helmets and explore the mines. What they discover when they enter is an underground forest with odd plants growing. Long ago, a meteor carrying life from a dead world arrived at Earth and became buried underground. The plants had festered in the caves for years until miners had dug it up and uncovered them. The group rescued someone from the mine and detonated dynamite in the opening, causing the thing to collapse, sealing the monstrous things in there to be locked away until some other unfortunate soul went looking for them again out of some bizarre sense of curiosity. Once out, they had low sanity, and their missing person, David, was completely mentally checked out. The group traveled out of Copperton, resting for the night in the woods. However, what they didn't know was that there was something else that was wandering the forest, something that had escaped from the mine before they detonated it, which hunted them that night. They encountered an alien creature known as Xylan, walking towards David. The creature took its long fingers, unwound them, and stabbed them through David's eyes, and they emerged out through the back of his skull. Panicked, they hid away, but the creature seemed to be content just with David, not noticing the others. It turned towards the edge of the cliff and started walking and walking. But instead of descending, he rose up and up toward the starry night sky. The figure became smaller and smaller, drifting toward one star before its body merged with the blackness of space and vanished. The players returned back to the city. In the aftermath of the incident, their crazy friend was taken into an insane asylum and was treated. He couldn't talk much, but he would sometimes draw strange images in his journal of a bizarre creature on a moonlit night, of some event that even words were too much for him, and would complain about the noises, all the noises, and would start to panic if he heard clicking in the air conditioning or a fan. Sometimes he would take his blanket and stuff it under the door or around a window. The nurses didn't bother him too much about it. After all, he seemed to sleep better like that. Dick Tracy started to get sick and was admitted to the hospital treated for a baffling disease that the doctors just couldn't seem to recognize. Though in his fevered state, he'd muttered out something, Infected aliens. Infected. There's no cure. It's from the, the darkness between the stars. But he clearly wasn't in his right mind. For one month, he grew sicker and sicker day by day before finally fighting it off. And it took him another month to fully recover. Just his dice. They were not on his side that time. Walter kept David's book that had notes about the mine, the mountains, and the strange one. The only other one who knew much was David, but he had perished that night on the cold mountaintop, and anything else he knew went with him. Instead of reading it, Walter just decided to keep it shut. Sometimes, late at night, out of curiosity, he would open it up and read a page or two, just to quickly snap it shut again. The book would just bring back bad memories and strange dreams. Later on, decades after, Several investigators were sent out to figure out what had happened at Copperton after the cold case was reopened. Hopefully, with any luck, they would find nothing, give up, and walk away. But if they were unfortunate to have someone who was just a little too curious, they might uncover something that should have been laid to rest. But that's a tale for another day, and that was where that session ended. <laughs>